So welcome everybody, welcome to Energy Play Shop number 64. So the, the theme for today is remembering, because um, last week we talked about the games that we picked to play um, when we are on this playground. And so we talked about, you know, all the all the games that we we're here to play. And um so why talking about remembering today? Because um, we have to forget who we are and we are eternal essence embodied. And as an eternal essence be, being, we can't play any of these games because we are eternal. We are all knowing. How can we play these games? These, uh, these games are kind of a little too kindergarten for us we would be able to see through these games and we won't be able to play however we want to play. And that's why we um, we forget who we are. So that's why when we are born into this, this reality or this game, this, this field of this game, we forget. We forget who we, who we are, who we truly are. And this forgetting who we are will allow us to be able to play. However, the um, the playground is up, upgrading to a, a place where we can start to remember more of who we are. And at some point we will be able to um, remember more and more and more. And so at some point the playground will be upgraded so much that we um, would be able to remember most if not all of who we are and still be able to play it will be completely different play than what we have been doing and um, we are starting that process of remembering so that's why um, last time I, I talked about the games we signed up to play and then this week I want to Talk about remembering, because when it's it's time to remember, or at least time to start to rem remember who we truly are. Um, it's going to take a while for us to remember who we truly are, and um, it's but it's time to start wherever we we are in this um in this game. Whenever it is that you really feel that, okay, yeah, I think I've had enough fun playing at the level that I've been playing. Fun as it may have been, I am ready. It, like, you truly have to feel that. You can't, you can't fudge this. You can't fool your soul. Like, cause, cause it's not, it's not your ego that wants to to upgrade. It's your soul. Your soul came here to have experiences, to learn. And once you have learned all that you wanted to learn, and and there is, then you come to a ceiling where you kind of cannot learn anymore at this level of playing. That's when you want to go play a different level of game where you will have a, a, another level of learning. So we, um, as the, the the whole planet is coming to that time where. The planet has already upgraded itself, and now it is really humanity itself that has made that collective agreement that, okay, we want to start to um, play at a different level. So we are collectively beginning to remember who we truly are as eternal essence. So that's why this, in this uh, playground, this play shop, I want to talk about remember. How do we remember? Because we've forgotten and we have played in this inverted matrix for so many thousands, tens of thousands of years. So how do we um, now reverse that process? And that's what this episode is about. <clears throat> so um, S with all the other episodes, I want to start with just coming together and having a short meditation, a, a presence meditation, so that we can 
or just let go of the day and be present to learn together, support each other. So just take a, tea, a deep breath in. So breathe in through your nose deeply. And through your nose again, let it all go. And then breathe in deeply again. And breathe out. Breathe in one more time. And let go. And continue to breathe in and out according to your own rhythm with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for you. Use your breath. The intention of this meditation is really to become present to yourself. So hold that intention in your mind, in your heart, as you breathe in. And so you want to bring all of your attention, intention, your energy back to yourself, using your breath as a guide. You just call all of your own attention, energy, intention, all of you, all parts of you, back to yourself. And just as you let go of being distracted by anything that is outside of you, go back to yourself and go back to this moment. Let go of what happened in the past. Don't even think about what may or may not happen in the future. Just be in this moment with yourself. With all of yourself. And use your breath, use your breathing in and breathing out to assist you in gathering all of yourself to come into this moment with you. And you may notice after a little bit that you feel a little bit different than before the meditation. And that difference in sensation is your way of giving yourself a hint that you are coming into this moment with yourself. And when you notice that difference, then you can take another deep breath in. Let it all go. And just gently come all the way back into the room, open your eyes if you have closed them, and welcome back. So, I am just going to pull up my notes, just to make sure I don't, um, I don't miss any points because I have, I, I do have a whole 
I do have something prepared so that I uh, to remind myself not to miss anything. But anyways, so remembering ourselves. So what what does it take to remember? Well, first, just remember that we, we can't play 3D games if we truly remember who we are. There is, but that does not mean that there's anything wrong with the games because we fully know before we come in, into this um, this playground, we fully know the kind of games that, that's available here. We, we have been... 100% there's no lie, no lying to us. We know what we are in for and we chose to play here. And we know full well that we're going to completely forget who we are in order to be able to play these games. So there's nothing wrong with these games. I just want to, to um, confirm that Nothing wrong with nothing wrong playing any of these games. We we may um, have a, a judgment that is is you know bad or dark games or any of those anything in between. Um, depending on where you at or where you 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 at in this process. Yes, the games are intense. However. From the point of view of eternal essence, nothing wrong with these games at all. In fact, it's some people actually enjoy these games. And well, yes, maybe while we are going through some dark times, we may not enjoy the the experience in that moment. But afterwards, like when we have learned the lessons, when we have overcome all those tests and um, all those scenarios, we, at a soul level, at least, would be able to say, oh, that was, that was a fun ride. Intense. Yes. Let's go do it again. So <clears throat> that's, that's really a, at a soul level. That's it. These, these games are fun. Um, and there absolutely is no judgment against these games doesn't mean that 3D is bad and 4D, 5D is good and you know ascending is good and not ascending is bad. No. Mm. Nothing like that at all. Um, the soul actually makes a choice of what it wants to do. And why would the soul make a choice? We do not know. At this level, at this consciousness level, we do not know. We do not know why, because there's so many things that affects why a soul choose to experience certain things. Um, we have no idea because we think of okay, we 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 have this body, and then we have we're in this world. But actually, it's not as simple as that. We are, we actually energies. We actually energies. Um, <clears throat> um, the 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 picture behind me is a tesseract. So it's it's. Some people believe that that is the 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 real um carrier of, of the, the soul. So this body that we think of here is just is just um an avatar while we are playing in, on this playground and and we have many different avatars playing in a lot of different um uh, planets, different levels of games and each would have a different avatar meaning different body, different vessel. But the real vessel for our soul actually looks something like that, like and like that shape. Um, true or not, I'm not saying it's, it's true, but you know, it, it feels right. <clears throat> I but the, the the truth is, I don't know at this level, I have no idea, but I do know that we are simply energies 
the the real me the not not the me in this body not the embodied me but the the eternal me is actually just energies and we are just um consciousness i, I think um, energy may not be the entirely right term for it but we are consciousness we are consciousness and our consciousness um <clears throat> the way we the way we experience anything is through patterns so what a pattern may look like and maybe let's say if i feel Let's say I have a good friend, and when I start, um, talk to that friend, I feel like she is. Um, I, I I feel all these feelings. Like I I enjoy talking with uh, um someone. I enjoy their company. Um, they may not be perfect, but I just enjoy communicating, interacting with them. So that is a pattern. So is so that relationship is a pattern, um, and all my own thoughts it's a pattern. So I'm just pattern acting upon patterns. So that's what we really are. However, in three D in this in this uh, playground, it looks like it looks like quote unquote it looks like me all the patterns uh, of my that represents be the my <clears throat> image of myself um is trans translates to this body and then another person that has a totally different out, out um makeup they would translate to be a different body and when the two bodies come on, come together to interact with each other as friends or as um, partners or as um, whether it is just very simple, you know, high and by kind of interaction or really a long um, marriage or long friendship. So that relationship itself is another pattern and the pattern the relationship we can't see it but energetically we can feel it and every time when I communicate with that person um, that I'm in relationship to all of that relationship patterns come into play and what I feel how I um, the words I say and all of that is really how um, that shows up. So <clears throat> we may think that we are solid and see what it is that we see. However, in the background, it's all just energy patterns, consciousness working upon each other. And what we see when we are in this playground is just a simulation or rendition of what we are trying to create so that is really what is going on and um so what does it take to really remember who we are meaning that we don't get too attached to the body or my thoughts because even though I think thoughts but they are technically not my thoughts they're not just my thoughts I would say because I am not just me this body is just a rendition of you know a, a lot of different interference patterns um, uh, consciousness patterns coming together so what are some of the, the interference patterns coming together? <clears throat> I look Chinese, so definitely I have a nationality of Chinese in that. 
So all of the, the, the qualities that you would associate with what being a Chinese is, I would have some of that. I may not have all of them, but I would have some of that. I, I would pick and choose. My soul would pick and choose what are some of those qualities that are uh, considered to be Chinese, and I would play with them. So that's that. Another one is, okay, I have two, I have two kids. So being a mother. So being a mother is another um, set of interference patterns because there are some behavior that only a mother or someone that is playing that role would have. And then being a woman definitely give me a totally different set of um, patterns, thinking that go into it. Something that a man who someone or someone who is playing with that, those um, that kind of character, they would have a different set of uh, thought patterns and their soul would pick and choose which of the, the predominantly male related or female related thought patterns that we want to play with. So that's, that's really all of that is kind of when you see me, when you, when you talk to me, underneath all of that background, that's all of those interference patterns that is coming to the, the that really is, is what you're interacting with. Is my soul pick and choosing, okay, this is a Chinese, somebody from a Chinese culture who has lived in Canada for a number of years. So there is the Chinese and then the Canadian overlapping and then the mother and the female overlapping and then a certain kind of education overlapping, a certain um, um, interests, like I'm interested in playing with energy. So like a, a person who would be sensitive to energy. So all of that, all different, uh, it's, it's data. Those are all different thought patterns. And so my soul would pick and choose which one of those that I'm interested in and collect them in me. The, <clears throat> the Winnie that you see in front of you is really the collection to so all my thoughts. I think it's my thoughts, but no. A lot of those are simply thoughts that I have pulled up from the, the, the different um, fields of thought patterns that I'm interested in, but they may not be me. They, they may not be representative of me. And because I don't remember who I am, so that's why I'm picking these these um, different thoughts to play with. And at some point, though, at some point, I played and played and played with these ideas, and I create experiences, I create my, my life, and all of that. And I got to some point where you know what, something is still missing. I don't know what it is, but something is still missing. I just, you know, am not as interested as um, to to play these games as before. I'm something else is actually more interesting to me. You at at some point you may get to this is you know what? I'm actually more curious about who I truly am underneath all of these thought patterns. I'm actually getting more curious about what lies underneath all of this. So how what does it take for me to remember to get to the bottom of who I truly am, the eternal nature of me, rather than all of these other things? So this is what the, the um, what I am actually want to talk more about. Well, the first thing, what 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 does it take to remember? The first thing is, of course, be curious. Be curious about 
who you truly are beyond the games, beyond the nationality, beyond all of the different identities that you have taken on yourself. Who is the being that is taking on these identities? Um, this is something that you may not even get to for a long time and it doesn't matter because you still you still really want to play this 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 game of playing with all of the the, the identities that you have taken on is is very engrossing. It's it's um it's fun. To some level it is fun. And um, so one of the ways is to really be curious about what lies underneath all of these. That's, that's, the, first, that's the first thing. And I remember um, when, I, when I first, um, that was when I first, that's how long ago? I forgot how long ago. But, you know, the long for the longest time, I always remember my thinking was, okay, I'm a human being having a spiritual experience. So for me, spirituality was like that for a long time. And then at some point, it flipped. I started to remember Somehow so I heard that we someone mentioned that we are actually spiritual beings, eternal spiritual beings, having a human experience. I heard that. And I heard that over and over again. And at first I'm I was only just saying it because you know I thought that was cool. That's what the spiritual people are supposed to say. So I was saying it, but at some point in time, I started to internalize that. And I started to believe more and more that I am actually eternal being. And it is really a, it is a very gradual process. And it starts with just a glimpse, a glimpse that, wow, I heard that I'm a spiritual being eternal being having a human experience and and if you are completely engrossed in the game this idea would be totally not interesting to you at all you would just you know some if you see the idea you would think huh, okay <laughs> <clears throat> what have you been smoking and then at some point though in your consciousness when you're ready, when your soul is actually ready, it will become more and more attractive. That idea will become more and more attractive to you. It doesn't mean that you're going to believe it 100% and be congruent with it, but you would start to believe it more and more each day until one day. It may take a year, it may take 10 years, it may take 10 lifetimes. Nobody knows how long it's going to take. And it does not matter because you're eternal. 10 lifetimes. What is 10 lifetimes? 10,000 lifetimes. Still, well, compare 10,000 lifetimes to eternity. It's no comparison. It does not matter how long it takes for you. But you would know. You would start to remember when this idea that you are eternal being having a human experience. This idea will start to become more and more interesting to you. And, and that's when you know your soul is starting to wake up, starting to remember. And then your soul will guide you on the next step. And the next step is starting to see um, the games 
you starting to observe yourself. Starting to observe yourself playing the game because you would never observe yourself playing the game when you are so far down the game. You're just playing it. You're just trying to survive. That's all you're trying. You, you're in fight or flight mode. But at some point when your soul has um, remembered enough of who it truly is, you will start to observe. You start to notice, oh, I said this. But it really does not, it's really not me. I don't know what came over me. It's not me. But I I know that, you know, it's, it's something I say, but I don't actually mean it. And you start to observe yourself doing things rather than just doing it and be completely absorbed in doing the things that you do to live so that's that's another that's actually a big step is when you start to observe yourself when you start to when you say something you start to um notice when you are congruent and when you're not <clears throat> And um, that's when things got, gets uh, interesting, because when you start to notice that you are actually playing a, a, a role rather than being completely immersed in the role. So that is when you are maybe about at least 40 percent. You at least 40 percent remember, remembering who you truly are. And so how do you um, hasten that process? Because that, that process may take, as I already mentioned, 10,000 lifetimes. How do you hasten that? I'm not saying that it's a good thing to hasten, that you must hasten. But if it resonates with you to, you know, hasten this process if you were to know what would it be one of the things that I I've heard a long time ago um, is to take full responsibility for your creation so this is one of those those um, <clears throat> those things that you can really fast track yourself is to take full responsibility for your creation. So what do I mean by your creation? Your experience. Everything that you experience is your creation. Now you may not you may not agree with me. That's totally okay. But I want you to really know that when you remember who you are, then you are a creator. Everything is your creation. Yes, this is the game and the game is rigged, but that is also your creation. So take a full responsibility for everything that you create. Take full responsibility doesn't mean that you take the blame for it. it. Has nothing to do with blame, nothing to do with good, bad, nothing. Just realize that whatever you see, Within yourself, outside of yourself, all that you see in your in your reality is your creation. Some part of you created it so that you can observe it. So when you can truly integrate, fully taking responsibility that everything you see, everything that catches your attention is your creation and that when it catches your attention it actually is that there's there's something within you that needed to be recognized because when we see it outside of ourselves like if we have an opinion about something it's it's also called projection because when something is that you don't quite want to own 
that, you know, I have this, you know, I am a greedy person or I am a, a jealous person and you don't own it yet. When you don't own it, you would project it. You would, you would be angry with people who are jealous. You would be angry with people who are greedy, you know. Why? This person is just hog, hogging everything. You you would be angry with that person. And that's when you know, ah, okay. <clears throat> what am I hogging? What am I being greedy? Where am I being greedy in my own life? That's that's a good question to ask yourself. Because there's nothing that you focus your attention to outside or nothing that you project outside yourself that does not have a similar reflection that is within you that you have not quite integrated yet. So it, it does not mean that, you know, yeah, you have to go and, you know, give a good talking to yourself, you know, you bad girl, you, you, you project that. No, nothing like that. It's not about blame. It's not about shame. It's about noticing noticing it oh I see this person doing this greedy thing and I don't like it so <clears throat> why be curious about why do I have that reaction is it because sometimes I'm greedy and I don't quite acknowledging it yet where in my life have I done this to other people that in some way I'm like it's not congruent with me inside. I don't quite own it yet. That's why I'm projecting it outside. And that really is why we have other people. Is is that everything around us, everything around us, everybody around us is really another part of us. They may not be in the same body as me, but consciousness, in my consciousness, there's some quality about them in my consciousness that I'm out of resonance. That's why I have that um, reaction to it. So <clears throat> that's really what taking full responsibility for your own creation is about, is to so your life, your reality, everyone around you, or the things that they're doing, if you have a reaction, then you have a resonance with that energy within you that you haven't quite looked at yet. So be responsible. Look at it. Sit with it. Be with it. Until you truly become okay with it have integrated it, made corrections if corrections needed to be made, or you simply recognize that, okay, this is where I'm at right now. I'm not ready to make changes, so this is where I am. And, and that's why I have that rea reaction to that person. It's not because that person is wrong, it's just... I have this thing that I, uh, within me that I haven't looked at and I'm not ready to look at and be okay with that. Just notice that you're not perfect. It's absolutely perfect to be imperfect. So um, I've been talking for quite a bit now. So let me just open the <clears throat> floor back. Questions, comments? I've put everybody to sleep. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no reaction? That's okay. Okay. It's taking me longer to fix my uh, windows. Uh, I need examples of what you were saying like to fix things and how do you fix emotions like yeah you can own them you can 
accept them. Um, but it's already gone in the past. Um, remember, I mentioned that we are we are just patterns, consciousness patterns. So yeah. the the emphasis is on consciousness patterns. So how do we fix something? We actually don't need to fix anything. We just have to be aware of it we just have to be a lot of the times we have feelings we have emotions and we don't know where those emotions come from because those patterns have been collected laid down when we were young kids or maybe we were even I'm not even born yet. We may, may be in our mother's womb and we hear something and that created a reaction within us. So and we have incorporated that. So and a lot of the the, the emotional patterns, a lot of the um, patterns behavior patterns is something that we actually picked up long before we become adults so and we don't remember we have we completely forgotten where the origin of those are however so so that's when they stay in the unconscious mind so and we have this we have the reaction and we don't know why. We have no idea why we react that way. But we, there's no denying that we react that way. It's because of all the things that is, that is unconscious. So what we need to do is actually just notice that we have, okay, I notice that. <clears throat> I do not like, um, let's say, for example, um, okay, my favorite example is my relationship with my mom, because that's something that I, that's been with me for a long time. And I can tell you that uh, our relationship pattern did not just originate in this lifetime. It, like, I can remember different lifetimes with my mom. So a lot of the dynamics between us has already been set up before... I ever was born. So how do you how do you work with this pattern? You don't need to. All you have to do is remember. Um, so all you have to do is, is actually remember that it was a pattern that I picked up a long time ago before and I was playing with that pattern. And so now with my consciousness now, I just want to be with that pattern. And the thing about consciousness is that when you set the intention that you want to shift that pattern, consciousness would just do it. It would just do it for you. It's the intention. That's why intention is very important. So you're not looking at a pattern to try to shift it. I'm going to take this pattern apart and rip it and just throw it out the garbage. It does not work like that. Because this pattern, the, the pattern, relationship pattern that I have with my mom, some of it we created, the two of us created. Some of it is actually very um, societal. Generation gap. So that is a thing that is not just unique to me and my mom. It's something that is in the collective to play with. So I can only work with my relationship with my mom. And so if I try to, if, if I try, if I go at it with the idea that I'm gonna shift this no matter what it takes, I'm actually going against uh, a collective 
pattern of generation gap and so much more. So just little me going against all of that, the whole collective, the whole human collective, maybe a lot of the human collective still wants to play with this game. Who am I to break it up for them? No, don't do that. Just work on your portion of it because we are each a fractal of the whole human collective. We are just um, a, just one representative. So my relationship with my mom is just one representative. So when I set the intention that I want to shift that, I want to improve on it and just put my own unconscious mind on, um, on alert and just so keep that apart. And I actually worked on my relationship with my mom through a number of years. Like at the very least 10, 15 years now. And now I'm getting to the point where I'm good with it. It's not perfect, but I'm good with it. I got to the point where I understand where everything comes from. And I just accept it, accept what it is that I can. And I have faith that, you know, yeah, it's not totally dissolved yet, but whatever it is that is disharmony be between us, I have faith that it's going to work out somehow. And I hold that intention. And so I have faith that the next time I see him or see her, each time I see my mother in the moment, we shift our relationship one step at a time. And that's how you can do it. That's how you shift a pattern. You set the intention, sit with that intention, and every time you're in the moment, engaging with that relationship pattern and doing your best to shift it one day at a time, one conversation at a time. Is that enough of an example? Yeah, it's easy to say all that, but I think it takes a lot of practice too. Like, yeah, uh, like to say, it took you 15 years to... Yeah, well, we have fun doing the 15 years. Uh, no, 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 we uh, don't have 15 years to... <laughs> Things are moving much faster now. It may not take 15 years. I'm just... Um, yeah, that's so what I'm saying. If things are moving take 15 faster. Years. Yeah, you know. It takes however long it takes. So, But that's when you have a face-to-face -face person. What if it's a remote person? You don't get a chance to change or anything. All you can say is you will not react to that person if it happens again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me give you another example. So I um, I love romantic movies. And um, not just ro not rom-com kind of romantic. I, I love um, really emotional, romantic kind of movies. Um, so really emotional, romantic involvement kind of movies. And I've noticed this. <clears throat> and I've noticed it in myself. And I don't, don't know why. I have completely amnesia about why I'm attracted to those movies. <clears throat> And I, I'm obsessed about it. For example, I have seen um, I have seen there's a movie called um, uh, let, let me see Casablanca. Um, Casablanca. I haven't seen Casablanca. You haven't seen Casablanca. I have not seen Casablanca. Like, for some reason, that that didn't. Uh, 
<clears throat> yeah, so so the most recent um, emotional movie I was really attracted to was um, a movie called Dead Man Walking. So a movie called Dead Man Walking, um, Colin Farrell, and I forgot the 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 woman who's who's playing the lead. So mm -hmm. they are, so they they met together. Um, so because of revenge, so they they both have something catastrophic happen in their life, and when they are on their way to take revenge on the people that you know did those things to them. They that's how they met. So like really emotional, but heavy emotional um, kind of involvement. I saw that movie, I don't know, maybe at least 10 times, like within the last six months. Wow. <laughs> that is obsession, right? <laughs> I do know how to do obsession right. So, And I was wondering, why the heck? Am I doing this? I mean, I've seen that movie so many times. I can pretty much recite the the, the dialogue yeah. already. Why am I still drawing to that movie? And it's like that's just an example. Uh, there there are um, others as well. Mm -hmm. So all of these heavy emotional romantic um, and the reason why I have to see that movie at least ten times was. I think I um, maybe about uh, last last two weeks within that, I suddenly remember it was a past life thing that is trying to get my attention. That's why I was obsessed about seeing that. So something similar must have happened in my past life and it is coming up for me to clear. So that's why I was so attracted to seeing that kind of movie, emotional content of that kind of movie. And once I remembered, oh, past life connection, got it, thank you. I no longer need to see that movie again. <laughs> <laughs> that's when I, that's when, you know, that's when I like, okay, done. But will you know I, the exact- Will I see that connection. movie again? It does not matter. It does not matter it what not the matter. exact connection is. It does not really matter. All it, you no, need to say is identified the, the emotional pattern. I've identified the emotional pattern and I've made the choice. It's done. I don't want to have that kind of relationship. That's just not one I want to play with. So I'm no. done. So it's a choice. Do I need to go through it again? It's not attractive to me anymore. So mm -hmm. that's how it works with me. Now, if you're the kind that needs to know exactly what it is, then you may need to see the movie another 10 times. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so you, like, I'm just giving you my example. How your consciousness work is uniquely you. So you have to do whatever it is that um, it takes for you to either let go of the pattern or know more about the details and nitty gritty things of it. So, but that I think is... I've seen the devil wears Prada about 10 times. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> in a year or half year, but now I I couldn't watch it. Like I would not have patience to watch the game. Okay. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> I feel like uh, I have sorted out everything when something happens between say a friend and you. And then uh, it comes up again every every few months. Or so keeps coming back. Okay. That's what I've got to figure out. Okay. Yeah. Then this this still it comes um, in different forms, but 
there's still something there. Something as the other person has reacted to very negatively. Yeah. And then yeah. Flash back. So still something there for you. That's okay. But that person lashed back at me. So then I realized that she was upset. But that's not what I was trying to do at all. I was just trying to understand where she's coming from. Um, I just felt that, okay, I made excuses. She's busy. She's caught up in things. And nowadays, things overwhelm us. We get caught up too much, too many things. And but it still so keeps bothering me that I, I've stopped myself from, you know, writing back to her saying what that I mean that way. I just wrote one line that I'm sorry if you felt bad. But that was not my intention. I'm just sharing information. But certain words that she said are still a trigger for me. Like, so the thought keeps going. You know, I could have said this. I could have said that. But I'm not taking action on it. That's the only good thing. But it keeps playing in my mind still. Okay. The pattern is not done with you. No, that's what I'm saying. So just just get curious. Just, just, just be curious. Ask. So if I were to know what, what would it be, please give me more data of what it is that I need to so, so um, when you ask, the universe answers you. It may not answer you in the most direct way, but just when you ask the universe a question, just pay attention to what comes up. Yeah. One way or another, you will get a, a an answer or more information or data for you to consider so yeah yeah ego mind <laughs> terrible <laughs> okay you can actually just sit with ego mind just say hey ego mind i so just ego mind and just sit with that and just um, hold the intention that you want to what do you want to do with the ego mind you want to so just set your intention what do you want to do with your ego mind be done with it okay sit with that <laughs> and see what happens see what shows up Okay, thank you. Thank you for the questions. Any other comments, questions? Everything's quiet. I have a question. When There's... it comes to regret, um, what do you have to remember there? You know, regrets that I didn't do that, I could have done that. So that's a past past life. It's a future life. Okay. So regrets. So it's a certain events. So don't think that all regrets are, you know, one big lump. It may be. But just look at one small event that you feel regret for at a time. Just focus on one. Don't just try to attack the whole regret thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just focus on one and just feel it. Where yeah. do you feel it in your body? So just notice where you feel in your body. Anywhere is fine. So just notice where it is. So it's a pattern. So mm -hmm. 
like the whole that whole event is a pattern then just set the intention that you want to resolve that regret you want to understand that regret you want to understand and you want to find out if there's anything you can do to resolve it so just set that intention mm -hmm. so when you have access to that pattern set the intention and then you just notice that pattern yeah because your consciousness already set an intent then that pattern will start to shift it may not shift to be completely resolved in you know next 10 minutes or even 10 hours it may take you a couple of days but once you set an intention to resolve a pattern um, you've already put that emotion mm -hmm. so just notice it's important to engage with that with that pattern you may not be able to sit with the pattern for you know hours on hand but just you know every day um every day that you still feel same regrets with the same event you just give yourself 15 20 minutes maybe half an hour at most to just sit with that pattern and just notice how that pattern shift Yeah. And it will shift because your consciousness will like when you you engage something with an intention of trying to understand it. And then it will start to show you how you can resolve it. That's my suggestion. Thank you. Good suggestion. Okay, you're welcome. Vini, if I understood you right, you just have to close your eyes and just um, imagine that situation. You have pattern this and uh, just look at, at this situation and um, make intentions that you want to change it or or how it's practically to do um okay so we are we are so consciousness is quantum in nature so so quantum theory is every time you observe something your consciousness will shift how that whatever it is that you're observing it will shift it because remember um last week we talked about there's non-locality is false meaning nothing is this there's nothing outside that we are actually in a game so every time you observe something your consciousness actually create that but when your consciousness, when you shift your consciousness to um, you want to resolve something rather than trying to reject it. Like if you're trying to if you're trying to fight it, then you actually make it more so. That's why it's that's why last week I mentioned you have to accept whatever the pattern is. Just yeah, that's that's so the pattern is is there it exists and so you you accept it and then you start to go with just okay get to the point where you don't reject something because you don't like it or it does not feel good i right? so if you're trying to fight something it does not work. This this does not work. You can you can surf for you know ten lifetimes. It still does not work because you're fighting with that pattern. So don't fight with the pattern. Accept it first. 
do that work within yourself. Get to the point where you accept, okay, this is this is what it is right now in this moment. That's what it is. And I'm not trying to shift it because I don't like it. I'm trying to just be with it. And I want to resolve it. How is it being resolved? I don't know. I just want to shift it. So just have that intention. So your intention is really from love. You want to shift something, not because you hate it, you judge it, but because you understand that you and that whatever that is out there is actually just one thing. Can I do it um, with a, you know, work situation? The yep. same? Yep. Does not matter what situation. Any situation is just a pattern. Okay, thank you. Okay. And any everything is just a pattern. And so, you said every day, like for a few minutes, until I gonna feel that it's really so it shifted to where you are okay with it. You got that? Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah, don't don't try to, you know, do it all in one sitting. Um, it does not work quite that way. Because this the whatever pattern um there is so much more underneath that pattern because like work a lot of people have work issues. So you're not trying to shift work issues. You're just trying to shift your relationship with that specific um, part of that pattern. So that's all you're trying to do. You're just shifting this one bit that you're entangled with, with that pattern. And you're not shifting, and, and don't try to shift it. Okay, I have, I want to shift it, you know. This is the only way that is the right way for me. No. Just be open-ended. Just just hold the intention that you want to shift it. Don't You don't know, but you just know that whatever it is right now is not working for you, so you want to shift it. Um, so the more you are able to let go of how to shift it and what it needs to shift to, the better it is. So just hold the intention that you want to shift it. And then just observe. Just be, Why observe? Because when you observe, then you actually, you're in the pattern. Because you only influence something that you're in with. If you're not in it, you can't change it. So that's what the observation is. Is you get yourself in the pattern. And then just let go and observe what happens. And see the pattern start to shift. And then the next day, next moment, observe it again until we get to a point where it's unraveled enough. So that's <clears throat> okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Vinny. Thank you for your questions. Any other comments, questions? Okay, so let me just check something. Oh, okay. Let me just check something. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think I have covered, I haven't covered everything, but I think I've covered enough because I want to leave time for a process tonight. So, unless you all, um, unless you have specific questions, I'm not going to say any more. I'm just going to do the process. <laughs> 